We're at the IS. We're here with Francois Dabi, who is with the University of Bordeaux in France. And we, you have presented just at this press conference. It'll be presented at the, at the we'll be presented tomorrow. On Friday. Friday. Uh, but it's available for absolutely. Yes. And your study presented something a little bit different than Kenya. So yes. give us a background on that. Yes, our study was designed and initiated about four years ago. And we raised the question at that time, if we try to test and treat everybody, will this reduce the transmission in the community? And in order to answer this question, we did what we call a randomized study in which we took communities, 11, in which we proposed testing to everybody and tried to treat everybody in this community. Mm -hmm. In the other 11 communities, we also proposed testing everybody, but we offered ART according to the national guidelines. And we went home. By going home, we repeatedly uh, obtain a dried blood spot uh, test uh, from, from the individuals, which allows us to say who got contaminated over time. So the first interesting information is that about a fourth of people living in this community cannot be reached even if you go home, because they are very mobile, they have other commitments, and even if you go home several times, you, you know they are residents, but you miss them. These are young men in particular, so they may be potential transmitters that you miss from the very beginning. Those who define home, 90% of them, even more than that, accept it to be tested. So that's an enormous you know, good result that, that we obtain. The problem is that we found 34% of them being positive. That's not a problem because that's the life in rural KwaZulu-Natal at the moment. About a third of them were on treatment when we started the project which is good, which means that the services have already arrived in these relatively remote communities. However, when we propose them more, especially in the group that was proposed universal treatment, not a lot, not a lot of them accepted, I should say were interested, and decided to make this new step rapidly. So at the end of the study, which was about 18 months in, on average, between, from the beginning to the end, uh, there were about 9% more people in, the, in this group where we proposed this universal strategy who accept to go into this. So they, they added to the usual number of people uh, on treatment. Very few uh, to a certain extent, or not a lot, and certainly much less than we anticipated. But there is another good news in the end, which is everybody who started treatment, irrespective of in which community they were, we achieved very, very good viral suppression. Mm -hmm. They all, almost all, 95% got viral suppression, uh, which is, means that the treatment works very well. So this is treatment as prevention? That's, yes. The question is, does that have any impact on uh, transmission? Well, as I say, we have these repeated measures on individuals that tell us who got contaminated and, and when. And we have, over the course of the study, uh, approximately uh, documented 500 new HIV infections. That's a lot, but you have to remember there are lots of people living with HIV in this community. And unfortunately, there was absolutely the same number in the intervention group where universal test and treat was proposed and in the control group where the standard of care, the South African standard of care was proposed. So over the course of this study, we were not able to demonstrate that proposing universal test and treat was very well done and, and therefore did not really impact on transmission and reduction of transmission that we would expect. I'm not saying that universal test and treat is not the right thing to do, and South African authorities have very recently decided to move into this direction. That's a perfect direction. What we are showing here is that there are many, many challenges to do it in practice, and we have solved some of them in our approach, but not all of them by far. So what is your next step? The next step is really, as I said, to try to identify the many small solutions that are applicable to this community and that could you know, attract many more people uh, into care once they are identified positive. That's probably the major stumbling block that we discovered that we need to try to fix, I would say. And the other problem that we are going to address is to propose other opportunities of testing to a community like this than simply home testing. Home testing seems to work very well 
when you find people home, and this is a majority of people, but we need to find many other ways for people to get tested at any point in time. And this is by doing this that we can sort of obtain the majority of HIV positive and propose them uh, to be treated. No, 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 as soon as they become infected. As soon as possible in the course of their infection. Some of them very early, some of them late. Many are transmitters, we are missing them, and they continue to fuel this epidemic uh, in, a, in, a, in a province like KwaZulu Natal. Well, it's, it seems like you learn a lot. Can you address some of the other issues on the, on the panel that uh, uh, the other, yeah, I think among the other issues on the panel that were addressed was that some of other studies like ours are ongoing in other countries. I'm thinking of um, uh, Kenya and Uganda, for, uh, Kenya and Uganda, yes. And they seem to have better results in terms of intermediate results. More people seem to enter into care. Uh, the same number of people seem to achieve viral suppression. But that means that probably there are solutions for KwaZulu-Natal, there are solutions for South Africa that may not be the same. You can't, you uh, can't yes. just... You can't transfer from one community to the other. Yes. That's good information to know. Yes, it is, and we will continue. Thank you very Thank much you. for your help to, you. to bring that to our audience. Thank, Thank you. you.